You're listening to Boobies and Newbies, brought to you by the Frolic Podcast Network. podcast that asks novice romance readers to think outside the dick in a box and brave the unbridled world of erotica. I'm your host, Kelly Reynolds, and I come to you now as a 31-year-old woman. Thanks to everyone who helped me celebrate my birthday this month. I appreciated all of your loving calls, messages, texts, even deliveries. I am so thankful that I've somehow cultivated a brand that revolves around boobs and butts and donuts, so much so that my apartment is now full of boobs and butts and donut covered goodies. So thank you for all knowing me so well. Now, last week, I announced some exciting upcoming projects for Boobies and Newbies with Slick Summer Nights, our summer special battle royale showdown between the steamiest scenes in your favorite romance novels, sure to be epic, and of course, Tit Talk, a monthly panel discussion between the folks who write romance and the readers who love them, coming to our YouTube channel this summer, so stay tuned for that. I will release details as things develop, and of course, the best way to hear more about it is to follow the podcast across social media at Boobies Podcast, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. As always, you can listen to past episodes of Boobies and Newbies on your favorite podcast app or on our website, boobiesandnewbies.com. If you're a fan of the show and you've got a few minutes to spare, I'd greatly appreciate a positive review on Apple Podcasts. And last but not least, if you would like to show the podcast a little extra love and support, might I recommend you head on over to our Patreon. We've got monthly patron-only events, early sneak peeks, bonus clips, and so much more, and you gain instant access to it for as little as $1 per month. You will find links to all of the above in today's show notes. But now, let's talk about two of my favorite things in the whole wide world, romance and theater. Joining me today is fellow Second City alum and hilarious writer, Leo Shell. Welcome, Leo. Hi, friends. How's it going? Hi, friend. <laughs> it's so good to hear your voice, see your face. Um, Leo and I were kind of uh, marveling over the fact that while we know each other and we met each other through a Second City writing course, we have yet to meet in person. <laughs> We've never met in person. I mean, I like I feel a serious kinship with you because I feel like we have a lot of the same interests, but yeah. <laughs> Like we've never met in person. <laughs> I feel like I could say that about so many people that I consider friends nowadays is just yeah. that I've met in the last couple years where we haven't had the opportunity to we've meet in person. Been stuck inside <laughs> like this in these this entire time. I like I'm like ghostly pale. I like have no social skills anymore. And that's just my life now. <laughs> but you have pink hair. I, yeah, I dyed my hair pink. And that was just like, it made me feel so much better about myself. <laughs> like, it's like such like a weird experience, like not looking like a gremlin, like for the last three years. <laughs> and then, like Suddenly having to be in person again and like having to like, I don't know, look like a human. So like oh, yeah. I dyed my hair pink because it's a conversation starter and we don't have to do this like small talk when Excellent. we talk about my pink hair. We can just jump into knowing each other. Excellent point. But I love that you've provided people with a conversation starter like, hi, look at my head. Let's talk about yes. it. <laughs> also, obviously I'm an attention whore. So like... <laughs> Well, Here, we here's be, something to talk about. We wouldn't yeah. be performers if we weren't attention whores in exactly. one way or another. Yes. Thank you for validating that for me. This is yes. clearly the correct life path that I've chosen. Oh, yeah. I don't think anybody goes into theater or co- comedy, especially comedy. without yeah. that need for attention, at least, at least oh, until absolutely. we go home and put on the sweatpants and go back into gremlin mode. Yeah. <laughs> Do you consider yourself like a true, true extrovert or like a kind of like am- like ambivert? You know, I would have said like extrovert 100% pre-pandemic and then the last couple of years have been the first years where I've lived on my own 
And I am one of those people that absolutely loves it. Like I love (laughs) seeing people, but then coming back to my own space. So I guess that would make me what, how do people say it? An introverted extrovert? Like I really do think (laughs) extrovert is like my top, my top way of describing myself. However, I love to be alone. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I like, it's not that like, I don't know, maybe this is like something I should talk about in therapy, but like, I don't like being alone, but I like being in silence, just like in the same room as somebody. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Don't talk to me. I need to recharge. But like, I, you know, (laughs) I love that. And you know what? It's so funny because the book we're talking about today is all about theater and musicals. And um, Mm -hmm. I was so excited this past week or so. What is time? Um, When the Grammys (laughs) happened and the women who wrote the unofficial Bridgerton musical won a Grammy for um, for their their musical. Wait, I actually didn't know that. I didn't watch the Grammys this year. Um, So I didn't know that. Wait, that's so cool. And but there's a song in it that's called Alone Together. And I was like, oh, that's like the perfect way to describe <laughs> my ideal romance is do you want to be alone together? Together? Not like, not like let's yes. go somewhere and be together alone. No, I want to no. be alone, alone together. together. There's Wait, a difference. I, I feel that on such a visceral <laughs> level. And my poor girlfriend, she's like an actual like real life extrovert. She's like, can we talk? Can we talk? And I'm like, no, I'm reading a romance book. <laughs> like- <laughs> You can gently stroke my feet. (laughs) Exactly. That is all the touch and like that I require at this moment. Yeah. Wait, you understand me. (laughs) I love it. Well, let's talk about romance novels and more specifically your experience with reading them. Tell me more. Yeah, actually, I started writing a rom-com for the first time in my life. And I realized like I don't really know much about like the genre or all the tropes and like I love like when Harry met Sally and oh, one of my favorite movies too. is like yeah like music and lyrics I don't know nobody ever watched that movie but I love it is that it. the one with uh, Hugh Grant and, and Drew, Barrymore. Drew Barrymore yes I love that movie <laughs> nobody's ever seen it but I love that movie so much I feel um, like I saw it once on tv <laughs> oh no yeah I like I watch it at least once a year <laughs> I yeah I don't know why it was such a life-changing experience for me um but like I yeah so I just like I just needed more like material and more just like inspiration so I just started Mm -hmm. reading like romance book like romance novels and just like stuff that like kind of coincided with all of the characters and themes that I'm talking about but also Mm -hmm. just like It's been a really long time since I've just, like, well, because uh, the pandemic, like, I haven't just, like, hung out with dudes in a while. And I was like, how do they talk? I can't even remember. (laughs) Like, all of my roommates are women. Like, I just, yeah. So it was, it just, like, helped me get into the mind space, into their mindset. Yeah. Anyway, so that's why I started writing, no, writing, reading romance novels. And then I was so excited when you, like, asked me to do this podcast because I was like, wait, this is, like, a whole, like, new phase of my life. And like I'm really yes. into the genre. Yeah. The rom com phase. I'm I'm here for it. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I love it so much. And like I'm really actually like into the whole genre now. Um I still have oh, a yeah. lot to learn. But like your podcast is helping. <laughs> Spend a day on uh romance TikTok and you'll you'll understand it you'll have it all down <laughs> I listen my entire personality is like 30 percent TikTok but like at least half of that is like book talk and that's where I get all of <laughs> my like all of my like romance read recommendations like it's just great my like whole feed is just cats and TikTok now <laughs> I mean, that sounds like a great combo. Yeah. (laughs) Or cats and book talk now, I mean. But yeah, yeah, that's it. That's it. Yeah. (laughs) Well, so and what have you found, you know, so far, I know you're still relatively a newbie to reading romance, but what have you found so far that um, you like, like specific tropes or, um, you know, like uh, subgenres that work for you? Yeah. um, I don't know if this is like embarrassed. Like, I don't know enough about this world to be like, to know if I should be embarrassed to admit this, but I'm no. really into mafia romance. <laughs> oh, no. But believe me, there is a large portion of readers who are also yeah. very into mafia romance. Yeah. I don't I don't know what it is. I don't know. Like, from a young age, I've always had a deep fascination with El Chapo. So, like, oh. I, yeah. So, I don't know. I mean, not, like, 
romantically not like I want to fuck El Chapo. Wait, can I say that word on this podcast? Oh, yeah. No, you can say whatever okay, you great. want. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but just like the whole, I don't know, just like uh, the whole like concept of the mafia has always fascinated me. So, yeah, I felt into that little niche very quick. That has nothing to do with the like rom-com that I'm writing, but like that's I, okay. You know, that's just I found it and loved it. <laughs> there are plenty of us who love to read about um women fucking aliens. Doesn't mean that's uh what I'm looking for in my real life or yeah. <laughs> what I'm hoping to write. <laughs> yeah, no, my like my best friend writes those like rights like women fucking alien stories and it just Perfect. like it's like I yeah I was just like never knew that that was like a popular thing on the internet like when you first started reading like rom-com or mm-hmm. romance novels like what were you kind of into I came in with contemporary romance like that was the first thing I read I think a lot of people they're I think a lot of people's journey with romance, depending on when you started and what's readily available to you, will influence the kind of reader that you are. Like Mm -hmm. a lot of people closer to like my mom's age maybe only had historical romance or Regency romance available to them Mm -hmm. to read in the uh, 70s, 80s. Um, And so because of that, that's kind of more where their interests lay. And that's not to say that our interests don't evolve over time. They certainly can. But we right. also find our our comfort spot, our, our you know zone of control where we're like, oh, this is the thing I know. Like, I can always go back to this right. specific author or this specific <laughs> style. Me, yeah. I came in with contemporary romance and it was just a book I picked up randomly from a stack of my mom had in the garage. And so I love that. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And I, and from there is, so I have always gravitated more towards contemporary than I have anything Mm -hmm. else. And Mm -hmm. it's also probably because I do write rom-coms. I've been an avid rom-com watcher my entire life. And so I think reading contemporary romance was the closest thing I could find to reading a rom-com as a book wait yeah yeah that totally makes sense I would you consider the book that we read today contemporary yes yes contemporary just meaning that it's set in the time we live in now and I think there's some debate over like how far contemporary can extend because at this point we have people who occasionally will write a book set in like the 80s or 90s and they call it historical and that just like breaks my heart because I'm like (laughs) we are not we are not historical (laughs) I don't know girl I'm like I'm 20 I'm almost 28 and I feel I feel the effects of being a piece of history at this point yeah we will be historical like I have no doubt about it We're just on the cusp now. We're just on the cusp. Give me give me 10 more years and then you can call the 90s historical. Just not yet. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> but no, I'm so excited that um, you know, you've you've found Book Talk, which, you know, once you go down that rabbit hole, whoo, You're just and never um leave. Yeah, it's and I and I'm glad that you've uh, you know, come into reading romance. We're well we're happy to have you. Thank you. I I feel so honored and so loved in this community. (laughs) Good. I I genuinely feel that because everybody is so welcoming. As soon as you're like, oh, I read smut. They're like, oh, my God. What are you into? (laughs) Which smut? Yeah, exactly. (laughs) What are you into? What's your kink? (laughs) It's so true. Like, there's a reason I post Captain Von Trapp gifts every Thursday now for thirst trap double p thursday that's amazing (laughs) i I didn't realize didn't realize i was into that until the last couple years (laughs) okay no but i've always thought captain von trap was sexy as fuck so like i get it thank you it's i did (laughs) too i just didn't realize it was okay for me to voice these opinions aloud and that there would be somebody else there to tell me (laughs) yeah i get it i feel the same way (laughs) Wait, this is a validating experience for me once more. Yes. Just because I've never talked to somebody about how hot I find Captain Von Trapp. And it's kind Girl, of weird. I he's am like here. married to an ex nun and like <laughs> old as fuck. But <laughs> yeah, he's for sure got it. like daddy dom energy. Absolutely. 100%. He can throw me around a little bit and I'm into yes. it. Yes. <laughs> Smack you with that glove. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> 
my gosh. Yeah, no, I, this is, this is what I love about romance is that I think so many people, because we still, even in 2022, have such a shame culture surrounding sex, especially female sexuality, that Mm -hmm. by having a genre that, I don't want to say exploits it, but like in a positive way. I'm not sure what the word is to say, like it positively exploits. I don't, yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Um, but yeah, I, I'm picking up what you're putting down, though. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Capitalizes. Maybe it capitalizes on that. Mm-hmm. And that's mm-hmm. not to say that romance is just for women or that it's just about women. I mean, granted, the book we're talking about today is a sapphic, you know, Very. female, female romance. <laughs> yeah. But there are so many different things you can find in romance that, you know, it's it's for everyone and people should just stop being ashamed. And thankfully, there's a there's a place now in this community that people have found where it is a place that they can talk about these things openly. Yeah, absolutely. It's not taboo. And also I've just like, there have been like things that I've read that I'm like, Oh, I might be into that. I'd love to, you know, try that at some point. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, yeah, I know that that's kind of like an experience that a lot of like romance smut I don't even know like I'm not even like entrenched enough in the genre I don't know like, call it what you labels. want yeah <laughs> right yeah just like you know I like whatever we read like it's just it, it's a whole new experience I mean that's just like literally the experience of books it's like you yeah read about somebody else's experience and then you can be like oh that's cool maybe I want to try that or like mm-hmm. have some empathy for that now but yeah <laughs> yeah exactly I also love seeing like my own re- experiences like reflected in romance like I love reading plus size romance I love reading romance like we're talking about today that takes place at the theater which I let me just say I feel like there is not enough Broadway theater musical like theater <laughs> kid love in romance novels like there's not enough that's totally fair I I feel like I actually missed out on something growing up because I was never like a theater kid like really I yeah yeah I feel like I totally would have loved it I just like I was like on the swim team and I like swim twice a day so it was just nice. like yeah, I mean, well, yeah. So it's just like it didn't really leave room to explore theater yeah. or acting or anything like in high school. And like I feel like all of the theater kids were just like they loved each other and like they had such great <laughs> friendships. Yeah. yeah. And I was just like, wow, I really missed out on that. And like I like musicals mostly watch this is embarrassing but mostly watching like the film adaptations of them like the, like Chicago formative experience for me that's one of yeah. my favorite adaptation it might Such be a my great favorite adaptation. still yeah yeah and also like Phantom of the Opera I love the adaptation I don't know how anybody else feels about it but I love it <laughs> yeah <laughs> I won't talk about that one hello 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 I had a feeling that it like that might be an unpopular opinion but um hey, yeah to each their own to each their yeah. own and and it's you know <laughs> I mean, I feel like this is also, by the way, the, the best way to segue into today's book that we're talking about, which is right. If I Told You by Avery Easton, who is a new to me author. So I'm always excited to read new to me authors, discover their work, dive into their backlist of other books. Um, and this yeah. contemporary sapphic romance was published in September 2021. It's available on Amazon for $6.99 Kindle edition. It's also the second book in Avery Easton's Hearts of Broadway series, and both books in the series are set in the world of Broadway theater in one way or the other, but you can read them um, as standalones. You don't have to read the first book to enjoy If I Told You. So there you go. There's all the, the info that everybody needs to know about this book, because my theater kid heart was so excited not only to see, first of all, ticks all my boxes. I'm like, sapphic romance. Great. Love it. Um, I I feel like for as many male male romances that are out in the world, there are not as many and clearly not enough female female romances. So absolutely. I agree. This is actually like, I don't know, for being a woman who's in a relationship with another woman, like this is literally the very first um, book I've ever read about like woman on woman you know like yeah I I, this was like a whole new experience for me yay Um, yeah excited (laughs) well and then to top it off not only do we have one character who's who her career is in theater she's in a musical that's soon to hit Broadway but also we have another character who is a comedian and I was like oh my god yeah this is a side that you also never get to see in a romance especially I had this conversation with Suzanne Park who uh in interview I found out she actually 
did used to do stand up comedy. And we talked about the fact that she should write a stand up comedy romance because there aren't enough representations of women in stand up yeah. comedy specifically. I think we all have a very specific image of stand up comedy. And the first image that comes to man is like, bigger white guy joking about like his wife and kids absolutely absolutely (laughs) I think that that's also been one of the like the biggest um uphill battles in my life is that like (laughs) not all stand-up comics are you know white men joking about their wives so yeah like I this was a refreshing moment for me yes um yeah just because like I loved how accurate I feel like the characters were in yeah. this like in this book I loved how she was like honest about the main characters like jealousy I don't know just like a mean girl kind of like tendencies mm-hmm, um mm-hmm. you know with like the stuff that happened in the beginning um that was yeah. refreshing for me actually because I feel like that was an interesting setup to the character yeah oh, you know what before we dive into all these details I'm gonna give everyone oh, right. a brief synopsis just so they know characters names what we're gonna talk about um but then we will return put a, put a pin in this we will come right back right, to right. this after the synopsis but <laughs> <laughs> here we go this is your synopsis for if I told you by Avery Easton Paige Parker danced before she could walk after a lifetime of performing her wildest dreams come true she gets the chance to originate a lead in a Broadway show determined to make the most of her time in Chicago where the musical is workshopping she vows to find herself No more crushes, no more dating, no more mistakes. But all of that changes when stand-up comedian Alexandra Tate walks into her life. By the way, both killer names. I feel like Paige Parker is like such a like Broadway marquee kind of name. Absolutely. And Alexandra, I don't know why Alexandra Tate was like, Alex Tate, that was perfect. Yeah. (laughs) Alex Tate. Yeah. Very cool. If she wasn't a comedian, she could be like a news reporter Alex Tate yeah. Channel 4 News um, <laughs> maybe someday sweet sexy and fun as hell Alex sweeps Paige off her feet gone are Paige's rules as well as her insecurities about not being worthy of love the magic of Chicago summer surrounds them and even though they try their best to simply enjoy the time they have they can't help falling in love autumn and lifelong dreams pull them in different directions What comes first, a love like neither's ever known or opportunities that they've yearned for their entire careers? If their ambitions don't keep them apart, Alex and Paige could find a way to their happily ever after. Lovely. Yeah, I will. I'm just going to go ahead and say, too, I for the most part, I really enjoyed this book. I think I think there were some pacing things that were like a little bit off for me. Oh my God. Es- thank you. Yes. Especially the like latter half of the book. Um, but that being said, loved the location. I am. A, I love me some Chicago and I loved that. By the way, this is like, I think the third or fourth book we've read this season set in Chicago. And I promise <laughs> I am not doing that on purpose. <laughs> Just so everybody knows, maybe it's because I lived there for some time and I went to school there. that naturally drawn to Chicago. I guess so. I do think it is a very, very cool city. Um, And if people haven't visited, I recommend you do so. But I, I love the location. I love the characters. Like we've both said, you know, before the synopsis that they, I feel like they're really accurate to what it's like to be not only a woman in performing arts, but also a queer woman in performing arts. And I really like the relationship that develops between the two of them, even though it kind of falls apart in the second half of the book. And that's the part that drove me crazy, but um, we'll, we'll get to that. So what are your initial impressions? I, yeah, I liked it. The pacing was like something that was a little like, I don't know, I don't know what you mean by pacing, but the pacing of the book, like, was something that kind of, like, uh, I, like, bumped up against, like, from mm-hmm. the beginning. Um, I, like, I get, like, <laughs> you know, romances between, like, women typically, like, develop quickly. So I don't know if, Insert like, they were just, like, lesbian joke about, exactly. like, a moving truck here. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So I didn't know if, like quick jumps between like time was like a literary device you know to reflect that. <laughs> that that is funny I didn't even think about that but you're right there are some 
there are some chapters where they'll be talking about like um I'm trying to, I forget when it starts like when what month it is when things first start but I know that she spends like the summer in Chicago yeah. um, and when I say she I mean Paige and but there would be moments where it'd be like oh yeah we have um you know a concert in at the end of the month and then it's like the next paragraph the, the next last paragraph. month had gone by so quickly <laughs> and I'm like whoa okay yeah. okay yeah. <laughs> so like I mean I liked that it was a cute like quick read I do wish yes. like we got more of those like intimate moments you know um Mm -hmm. that like make love stories so unique and interesting but like Mm -hmm. again I don't know but like I really liked the read you know like it was cute it was fun um I actually like listened to it on audible because I was like I need to I need to do this fast and I like you know I like want to be prepared for this podcast and like like didn't have a lot of time this week so I listened to it on audible and it was a very fast listen yeah well the book the physical book, I will say, only comes in – it's under 200 pages. So it's yeah. definitely on the shorter side of romance novels. What did you think of the voices? I'm always curious about, like, the narrators for audiobooks because I'm not a huge audiobook listener. So mm. tell me. Yeah, I actually was, like, very pleasantly surprised by this narrator. I feel like a lot of times – like Audible will like hit the nail on the head with like the male narrators but like the female Mm. voices just like aren't as good but this one I like I really liked her I really liked how she like Alexandra's like smoky voice you know just like yeah yeah I think she did a really good job that's good good well and I do want to point out to people listening because I know so much romance today especially contemporary romance is written from dual point of view we get like mm, the perspective mm-hmm. of both love interests and in this one this story is told entirely from Paige's point of view so yeah. um that might be something that deters people from reading the book that might be something that people actually gravitate more towards um I, I found that everybody kind of has personal preference as far as POV goes in romance yeah I um I think like I didn't really start getting into or didn't really know that like romance novels from like a guy's point of view were like Mm -hmm. a big thing until I read like Sierra Simone's like (gasps) priest. I was like, Uh, whoa, what a way to make your entry into romance just to read a priest. (laughs) (laughs) I like, wait, I read the second one before I read the, uh, before I read Priest Sinner. (laughs) Anyway, um, (laughs) this is beside the point, but yeah, I didn't realize that like dual point of views and stuff like that and like other non, non like women main character point of views were like popular in the space until, you know. Yeah. yeah. It's interesting. I will say, and we, we've talked about this on the podcast before when we have both like, let's say specifically in like a a romance between a man and a woman, Mm -hmm. when we have those dual point of views I find that women maybe I shouldn't say women I find that readers are almost a little more forgiving towards the male perspective than they are towards the female perspective I think I agree we have this natural tendency especially women do to judge women's choices because like we want them to do better and like make better choices than like maybe we would make or yeah um better we we're rooting for them we want them to make better choices than they are making but as a reminder we're all flawed humans we should expect no different from our characters and we should hold all the characters accountable for the choices they may or may not make make. (laughs) yeah no totally absolutely I do feel like a lot of like romance like novels are like this dude is a piece of shit but you're supposed to love him and but isn't he hot look at those (laughs) arms and he's a billionaire (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, um, it's, uh, yeah, it's a tough one. Yeah, no, but I, like, going back to, like, this book and the characters, like, I really do think that, like, I was pleasantly surprised by, like, how honest she was about, like, mm-hmm. about, like, the main character's kind of flaws. Mm-hmm. Um, I do feel like in a lot of just, like, books written for women, by women, and when I say women, I mean, like, women with an X, like, mm-hmm. for femmes by fem- I don't know. I just had to say that. I, like, I feel like a lot of these, like, characters can be a little like pick me like they're just like very like strong independent like perfect characters Mm -hmm, like to a mm -hmm. fault you know but like this like representation of like 
a page excuse me like yeah. we're like it was like honest and I appreciated that yeah you know? I I thought it was kind of a major risk but I I didn't mind it that yeah Avery Easton takes just in the very first chapter we we basically learn about the negative past that Paige has had before we even really get to know Paige. Like, I mean, I feel like oh, yeah. it's it's one of the first things we learn about Paige is that she had a previous relationship with a Broadway actor. And I don't, she kind of described it as like, I used him and like all this stuff. I didn't really necessarily get that from like the way that she described the relationship. It just kind of seemed like she wasn't making the progress in her professional career that she wanted in the time that she wanted. And she was taking it out on him, him. which I yeah. think is pretty accurate for, uh, for like a relationship, regardless of what career you're in. I think that happens all the time with, with couples. So yeah, totally. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't think it was that bad the way she described it. I am curious because I know I went back to look at what the first book is about in this series. And it is about Ethan, the guy that she's talking about, like that she used to date. And so I'm wondering if we get to see Paige from that point of view in the first book as like the quote unquote villain and then this is sort of more of like her redemption arc but oh I didn't read the first book so I don't know yeah okay maybe I should go back and read the first book because I was like wow she's being really honest um you know yeah yeah. like brutally and she's so hard on herself which I think is very realistic especially for performers artists Mm of any sort um but I just the way she was describing it I was like this doesn't really sound that bad yeah. but <laughs> I mean yeah, yeah yeah except for like that one I don't know like one moment I maybe I should go read the first one and see like how I feel about mm-hmm. Paige after that yeah maybe this is like a redemption <laughs> story and I just had no idea I have, yeah yeah I have no idea either and it kind of makes me wonder too whose story like what the perspective is in the first book like if it's told from Ethan's point of view if it's told from whoever his love interest in the first book is like her point of view like I I have no idea and so I I am curious and I love me some Broadway and so I'm like okay um I think I do want to go back and read it I I do wonder do you think you would have had a different opinion about not only the pacing but just like the characters as a whole if in this book we had also had Alex's point of view actually yeah because I do feel a little bit like as honest as she was about Paige I do feel like the author really wanted us to love Alex so yeah. um I would have loved a little bit more about her struggles and like mm-hmm. maybe like why she was making the choices that she was the book is great as it is like it's cool Mm -hmm. I just like I think like as a writer like I would have loved to see like that kind of challenge um yeah of like you know Alex's like imperfect decisions but we you know want to root for her anyway and her inner struggle like Mm -hmm. I I mean because we see Paige is like always questioning herself like anytime something somebody calls her or like says her name she's like oh my god is this gonna be the moment where they realize they've made a terrible mistake and I'm gonna be axed from the show and I'll never have a career again imposter syndrome is real you know and I yeah yeah I I think what it is for me is that it's a short book in general it's not that long I have I will say I'm a little biased I have grown very accustomed to reading dual POVs and I think what I like about them is that there, sometimes we see characters make action and or say certain things that it's not what they mean. It's not or they're making those choices for the wrong reasons mm-hmm. or maybe it's the right reasons for them, but we don't know. Yeah. And so when we have that dual POV, then we can kind of like see inside their heads a little bit, get kind of a better understanding of, OK, she's pushing her away. OK, I get it, you know, but but like in this one. The moment when they break up, Alex is the one to end the relationship. And all we know to that point is that Paige has been the one having doubts this whole time because there's a there's a time limit. They know that they can't 
or well, I shouldn't say that they can't stay together yeah. because they 100 percent can. They totally could have. Yeah, <laughs> that's that. We'll get to yeah. that in a second. But um, they they have put this time limit on their relationship because they both don't know what's coming next in their careers, and we know that Paige is dreading this countdown to it. But Alex is the one to end the relationship in tears you know, saying, I can't do this. I can't fall more in love yeah. with you only to like have to break up. At a very and inopportune like, moment. Like, <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. And I was like, I wish we had seen some of these doubts and feelings from Alex before now, because for me, it almost came out of nowhere. I was right. like, Alex seemed like she was on board with everything that was going on up till oh, now. Totally. <laughs> so, yeah. And then like, also though, like now that we're talking about it, I'm like, oh, I would have like, I was like the other day or yesterday when I was thinking about it, I was like, oh yeah, I really would have loved to have Alex's like point of view, but like, that's not like every, like everybody has like a single mind, like their single yeah, experience of love. So like, I don't know, like I understand why it was written that way. Yeah. I just also would have loved as a reader to have Alex's point of view. I know it's, it's me being greedy. Yeah. That's what it is. It's <laughs> me saying, I want to understand why this person, it's the same reason yeah. I watch serial killer documentaries. I want to know why people make the choices they <laughs> make. They yeah. And I, I think there are a lot of people who love reading romance, who also love watching crime. And it's because of the psychology behind it. It's oh, yeah. why, why are you doing these things? Why are you saying these things? Like, and we don't naturally get those answers in real life necessarily in relationships and breakups and dating. And so to have books that explain it to me and say, oh, no, no, no it's okay. He doesn't really want to break up. He's doing it for her. <laughs> like, don't, don't worry about it. Like, then I, my heart is at ease. Like, yeah, my heart is at ease. Yeah. <laughs> this book, this book, I was getting like mad anxious because we, at, I checked my Kindle at 95% of the story, way, the way into the, into the story. Uh-huh. They still had not gotten back together. And I was like, <laughs> like oh, wait, wait. good God. <laughs> And I was like, I know, I know it's got to happen because it's a romance novel. It's the one, but I was like thinking I might've been duped. I might have been duped and yeah. they just weren't going to make it or it was going to fast forward like 10 years in the future and they, they meet again and now they can be together. I'm like, no, I need it now. Yeah. No, I actually like, I thought the exact same thing because literally before this, I read um, Ugly Love by Colleen Hoover. Have you read that one yet? Oh. Yeah. No, I can't read Colleen Hoover because I know I'll have feelings and I don't like that about myself. Yeah, I, yeah, it's, um, I like, it was just, I, again, Book Talk recommended it. So it was just like, oh, okay, I'm sure, sure they it. did. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm sure. And I'm sure it's wonderful. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's kind of what happened was like, you know, like there was one love story and there was a second love story. It was like, oh my God, are we just going to get like a second love story in the last five pages? Like what is happening no, here? Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> not for so me. I was, not yeah, for I me. was kind of scarred. <laughs> yeah. That's, um, that I'm not, I'm not even going to comment on it because I haven't read it. I can't say anything about it, but, um, <laughs> That's not what I like to read. And and so I I had my doubts because the first half of this book is beautiful. It's Mm -hmm. this lovely, not only love story, but coming out story and an acceptance of yourself and Paige realizing she's bisexual. And oh my God, how did I not know this all this time? Because I've been attracted to women. And (laughs) I, I love when they do their like, um, tour of Chicago because Alex is, you know, a Chicago girl. And she's like, oh my God, I want to take you to all my favorite places. And they go to a Cubs game. Yeah. And I think my favorite scene is when they go to the pride parade, which I adore. Yeah, it was so Um, cute. So sweet. And, and honestly, they just really settle into like this comfortable place together that you hear everybody talk about when they find, you know, the person that they really want to be with. Like, oh, it was just easy. It was just like there was something about it that was different than the other relationships I've been in before. And I don't know what it is, but it just works. And we saw that with them. Yeah, actually, like, I really want to know, like, how the author, like, found 
this book and like this story and like because it was like a a moment for me like it was actually exactly what it was like finding my girlfriend Mm. I like you know I you know always thought I was straight did not realize I'd been attracted to women my entire life I was like oh wait (laughs) yeah maybe that was a crush like a few months ago um when I was having like that like come to Jesus moment right (laughs) my girlfriend and I like we're like the first women that we've like both ever dated and it was just like one of those relationships where you know like we developed like a really really easy friendship and then like a like it was just like a really natural progression and like from being best friends to like oh wait yeah we are in love you know and it's just like (laughs) we kind of both had that like that experience that like Paige goes through and it was really like authentically written and I mean it didn't happen as quickly as you know Paige like (laughs) Exactly. I was just like, wow, that was fast. Like two pages later, she's like, yeah, bye. So like, I just thought it was really authentic and really well written because like yeah. I, every other woman that I know who's like dated a woman for the first time, mm-hmm. it's just like mm-hmm. had that moment where it's like, oh, wait, yeah, this is this is who I am. Yeah. I love the line Paige has. I think it's after the first time that they have sex is like, why haven't I been doing this like my whole adult life? Right. Or, like, yeah. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it was great. But no, I and I like that there was some hesitation on Alex's part as well of yeah. like, ooh, I don't know if I want to date somebody who's just like kind of like questioning their sexuality. Like yeah. because I have friends who have also been in that that situation before and I'm like, I understand I understand like the the uncomfortability that like comes with that. And then the whole I I was really worried there was going to be like some backlash of like where she doesn't want to tell her family or like Mm, she hides mm -hmm. it and she does wait a while to tell them but when she does she's still very open about it like oh no her name is Alex it's a woman I'm dating a woman and her family who I adore I love me some like burly brothers (laughs) and dad who are like great sounds good is she hot (laughs) what does she like to do I love it love to see it (laughs) yeah I really I really really appreciated that because like I mean like to me I'm just like okay this is who I am like you can be like like take it or leave it like that's how I've always been with my family also just like she was like I'm comfortable enough with myself to where like I don't have to like hide this from my family because I like I know that they're just going to act how they, they're just going to react how they react. And I live in a different I'm, city, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> right. <laughs> Very true. Um, I just and it's it's I have a hard time. I feel like usually reading. I love reading queer romance, but mm-hmm. I have a hard time reading queer romance where one of the main plot arcs is a coming out story and like having to deal with like potential repercussions and like oh my mm. god my family won't accept me and yeah. it's it's not because I don't recognize that as like a valid story like I I know that that's a story for so many people but right. it's because I just want to see the joy I want the queer jo- I want the joyful queer love story I yeah. there's too many books and movies that focus on the negative that I'm like can we celebrate can we celebrate these right? people yeah. for who they are like we mm-hmm. don't need to go into all of these awful things that like could potentially happen and have happened to someone at some point, like let them be in love. I agree wholeheartedly, wholeheartedly. Oh my God, I can speak with that. <laughs> like I, it's just like in general about any marginalized community. It's just like, I just want to like read something about somebody having a good time. Like that's yeah. why I read books. Like I just need to escape everyday life so it's like even like you know also like especially with like plus size women like as a plus size woman I'm just like I don't want to read a book about how like she's really struggling with body image I can't it's not for me like and I love reading fat women I love reading fat (laughs) men like I love fat people in general in general like like, we need better like representation you know yeah can they just be happy can they just be happy (laughs) and also be fat can they be sexual and also be (laughs) fat there's nothing wrong with that (laughs) exactly exactly so not like I yeah like I just I loved that there wasn't like a big to do about having to come out because it was just like, that's not the point of the book. And I like it. No, no. It really warmed my soul. (laughs) Yeah. I, I really enjoyed it. I loved her family. I loved the family of this like theater group. Um, I will say if you are 
a theater person or have ever thought of yourself as a theater person, I think there's a layer of this book that you will enjoy more than mm-hmm. like other mm-hmm. people who maybe haven't had as much experience in theater. Yeah. Um, I know you listen to the audiobook, but let me tell you when you're reading the Kindle book, I thought this was so cool. So many authors these days will create Spotify playlists to go with uh-huh. their books. And I'm like, oh, how cute. That's so clever. I love that. Yeah. Avery Easton went the extra mile because there would be moments while reading the Kindle book where a passage of text would be highlighted. Uh And if you clicked on the highlight, it would take you to a song on YouTube. And all of the songs were songs from Broadway musicals. Wait, that's really cool. Oh, and my I God. got so into like, depending on like what the line of text would be, I would start playing a guessing game with myself because I'm an Aries and I need to win. <laughs> so any way I can create a competition, I will, even if it's just with me. So I, I would see it and I'd be like, like, there's one, there's one moment where she says something like, I'll take care of it tomorrow, tomorrow. I love you tomorrow. And I'm like, yeah. boom, Annie, there Annie, it is yeah. right there. <laughs> Yeah, I I do that too, where I was just like, oh, let me like see how many references I got, like I can get, like that mm-hmm. one was a, a moment where I was like, That's yeah, funny. yeah, yeah, and see, and you were just listening to it, you weren't even seeing like the highlights, so I uh-huh. mean, the fact that you could pick up on it, I mean, just I feel like from that listening. one's like a really easy one, like let's not give me too much mm-hmm. credit. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, but also you just revolutionized my entire experience of Kindle reading because like I never click on the highlighted like moments. Like I never do that. That's not a normal, like that doesn't happen a lot. I can think Uh of like two books in the past that I've read that have done the same thing where it like links to specific music. But normally that's not like the usual reading experience I have. However, it is an option. So for any authors that are listening who want to incorporate that into their books, please do. (laughs) Please do. Please do. Um, Honestly, I would love that so much. Yeah. Also, I should start clicking on links. (laughs) Or not. (laughs) I mean, it's totally up to you. I just, I thought it kind of made... You just enriched my whole experience of life. Well, and especially a book that takes place in musical theater and they're they're you know workshopping this musical that may or may not go to Broadway which also sounds like a cute musical I will say I get mm-hmm. really- I love Smash did you ever watch yes. the movie Smash? there was a song I from mean, Smash. The Smash there was a song from Smash on Wait, that playlist mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. I think it was when she was going to do her audition and they had let me be your star as one of the uh one of the songs oh, that's and dope yeah but I um but no, I I love that, and I, I I get really upset when I read books and they talk about like movies or shows or inventions or apps that like aren't a real thing. That I'm like, God damn it, why isn't this a thing? Like, why? <laughs> where's this show? I would go see this show. This would be an incredible Broadway show. Where's this app for dating where you match with somebody based on? what's in their fridge like I want that that would be great (laughs) (laughs) I mean honestly because I've been reading a lot of like mafia romances there really aren't a lot of things about that world where are all the mafia yeah where are all the sexy Italian made men (laughs) that's not really exactly something that's like missing from my life (laughs) not the same But yeah, no, I did think that was a great addition. I will say that I feel like just with the one thing that just was hard for me was that the second half of the book after they've broken up is just really sad. Like, I mean, she's still going through this rehearsal process and, um, you know, Alex is on tour doing the comedy thing, which here's the thing. I really appreciate when characters don't make major sacrifices for the other person. Like there there's something about especially in small town romance that Mm -hmm. really annoys me. We see this all the time in freaking Hallmark movies too, is where they fall in love while one of them is like visiting. And then the person who's visiting, AKA the woman (laughs) always gives up her career, gives up her stellar life. She has in Manhattan to move to this town. So mad. Cause I would never. (laughs) No, I would never. And honestly with both Alex and Paige, I'm like, I understand like Paige is on like the brink of Broadway stardom. Fantastic. Should you give that up? Absolutely not. Definitely. Alex 
is doing a comedy tour and then potentially heading to LA to, uh, you know, work on a TV show. I'm like, great. You shouldn't give that up either. Yeah. I just kept getting frustrating with them because I'm like, people make stuff like this work. Like art couple, there are so many people in the arts who are bi-coastal couples. Yeah. Like there are so many people who see each other on their breaks or one person flies out on the weekend. Like, yeah. it's not impossible. So I kept... It just bothered me that they kept treating it as like an impossibility. Like, oh, we could never do this. Yeah, because it's like like a show like 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 from beginning to end. That's like six months, depending on like what like network it is. You know, it's just like it's not like a forever thing. You can like live in New York while you're waiting for your next gig. So yeah, I can talk on the phone every day. You can Zoom every day. Yeah. And I mean, I like there is an element to like, I don't know that I'd want to like live in the like completely yeah. different place than the person I am in love with. But like mm-hmm. if it was real, like you'd you'd make it work and you'd figure out like yeah. there is a date in the future that you know that you will live in the same place. Exactly. You know? It just it just bothered me that at the end the only reason they got back together was because Alex all of a sudden got a job in New York. Yeah. Like, to me... It was just a little too fortuitous. It's kind of the equivalent of, like, there's... I think one of the reasons a lot of people don't like accidental pregnancy or secret baby romances is because if the person finds out that the female character is pregnant and then declares their love for them, um, like, oh... Be with me. I want to raise a baby together. Together, yeah. I'm like, okay, but are you here for her or are you here for the baby? Like, I'm confused. And so that's kind of what it felt like to me is like, I want this person to be the choice you make. I don't want it to be like a side effect of the choice you make. Like, I want it to be the choice no yeah I maybe I'm being greedy again (laughs) no I agree and it's like again one of those things where it's like yeah maybe that would probably happen in real life but like I'm listening I'm like listening and reading this book because I I don't know I want a true romance I want like her to be like the the choice that you make not because you have to also raise a child with them you know like yeah. yeah so I that also did bother me because also though like I didn't know from the jump that like Maybe I missed this. Tell me if I missed this and it was there. But I didn't know from okay. the jump that like New York was an option and she was just like taking the like, No, we right, didn't. Right? Yeah, like we did. So this is something that might have benefited from Alex's point yeah. of view because we we kept finding things out. I feel like it at opportune moments yeah. to reveal them. Like we didn't even realize that she was offered a job in New York and turn cuz I'm like to me that would have been a great moment mm-hmm. to throw a wrench in their relationship yeah. is if she had told Paige, "Hey, I was or, or if Paige found out that she was offered a job in New York and turned it down yeah. to go to LA instead." I'm like, "Ooh, that would have broken you up for sure." Absolutely. Like that would have been a great breakup moment as well. So I, yeah, I just, I feel like they're all the pieces were there, but there were maybe things that could have been moved around. And I definitely would have wanted to see them get back together for the reasoning of being together and not that, Oh, now, now our jobs. Allow now it's us possible. To yeah. Like, we can I, yeah. do it. <laughs> yeah, we can do it now. Cause it's convenient. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I agree. I agree. And like going back to that whole, like Alex having the opportunity to like take a chance on New York or like take a chance on LA. Like, yeah, I feel like Avery Easton really had a chance to like make Alex's character a little bit more like colorful and a little bit more interesting. Mm -hmm. Like I feel like she kind of just wanted us to love Alex as much as she does. And we, and we did, we were like, Alex didn't really seem to have, any flaws like mm-hmm. it was just kind of like oh here's this incredible woman yeah that Paige has found she's so good to her she doesn't do you know she treats her so well she doesn't like do anything wrong I mean honestly even when she makes the choice to end their relationship you're like I understand like I mean I understand that it would be challenging to be together on different coasts like I I do get it Mm -hmm. and like you and I said it it would maybe be something that like in real life 
wouldn't work for us personally, but people do it. And the fact that they don't even talk about it yeah. is the problem for me. And then to couple that with the ending of just, oh, I, I had this other opportunity I never told you about and it worked out. So now I'm in New York. It's like, <laughs> uh, and this like, is, cool, this is awesome. mind you, like the final, like three pages of the book. Like oh, it yeah. just, it was a, it was a speedy wrap up. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> Not my favorite like, ending. Yeah, um, uh-huh. I mean, I do like that they ended up after, together. Fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, uh-huh. exactly. Mission accomplished. They yeah. did end up happily together. <laughs> However, it just was not perhaps the way that I had hoped it would go for them. So oh, it makes me wonder too. I'm like, well, what happens if one of them gets a job in LA in the future? Like what happens yeah, when, like, yeah. What happens when Alex inevitably does move to LA or like, Paige you know. takes the show on tour or something? I'm just yeah. like, Oh yeah. Yeah. Like <laughs> we have, I have work? questions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> None of that was wrapped up. And those are obviously like very realistic <laughs> conversations that you have to have when you love somebody. Yeah. Like you haven't solved the problem. You've literally just put a bandaid on the problem. Like oh, this yeah. is going to come uh-huh. up again <laughs> later. <laughs> and like as a human being, I, I'm totally like that is my MO. Like band-aid, we'll deal with this later. Yeah. But like I <laughs> It's not why we read books. <laughs> I know. I know. So that being said, I did find it overall really enjoyable. And I do I do want to go back. Well, one, I want to go back and read the first book in the series. But I also, mm-hmm. I want there to be more. I feel like we got to meet so many fun characters that are just within the sphere of Paige's world. Like, that. you know, yeah. she has her friend Dev and there's... Her friend I want Kat. Dev's love story. Oh, yeah. I love Dev. Well, and and then when Dev or, and Kat kissed, I was like, oh my yeah. God, are they gonna be yeah, a couple? That's the I third really book. That, yeah, yeah, that's the third book is their love story. I'm calling it now. I would love that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's great. Yeah. No, I would absolutely love that. I did also, before we get into the um the sexy bits, I did just want to say I really appreciated this one line where she's talking about how she did like the, I don't know if it was her, somebody did the junior version of rent and instead of AIDS, it's diabetes. <laughs> and that was, that's directly from an SNL sketch that they do where it's like rent for kids and they say instead of AIDS, it's diabetes. So it's like, oh, we've been sharing needles and now I have diabetes. <laughs> and I just thought, it was the funniest. I love that SNL sketch. And I loved the shout out within this book to it. <laughs> I, okay. In t- like honesty moment, I've never seen Rent. I like, oh, I feel like I need to. <laughs> absolutely. Like I absolutely should. Yeah. I think you'll have a very different experience watching it as an adult woman than you would have like when I watched it, when it, when I was like 14, because when you're, when you're a teenager, you're like, oh, this is so, it is very good. I'm not saying it's not good, but Uh there comes a point in your life where you're watching it and they're singing a song about how they're not going to pay rent because it's not fair. And I'm just like, bitch, pay your rent. Like, (laughs) I don't, I don't understand why you think it's okay. Pay the rent. Yeah. That you don't get to pay rent. (laughs) <laughs> mm. I okay so I, I should watch it I should watch it yes. like that's uh, okay okay I'll watch it um just because like I feel like in every single aspect of my life somebody references it and like <laughs> obviously like working in Hollywood there are like a lot of people who grew up as like theater kids right sure, so sure. like it's it's just like a, an experience that I missed out on also it was a very sheltered very like catholic upbringing child so great like, this one probably... will be great <laughs> <laughs> there's probably a reason I didn't like see it. it's so it's so good though I do I there's a special place in my heart for rent and honestly it was great I love that they mention it in this book a few times because we find out that Paige at one point played Maureen who in mm-hmm. the show is a woman that's like been with men and then leaves her boyfriend to be with a woman for the first time and I'm like, oh my God, hello, that's you. And yeah. people pointed that out to her as well. So I was just like, I love that we're making all these connections, like both 
in the shows that we're performing in and also the ones of our past and how how much of you is like actually in those characters that you've played right. and vice mm-hmm. versa. So, yeah. um, but enough about um, Rent, although I can't wait to hear your thoughts when you do <laughs> eventually I'll watch you it. Know. I'm probably going to watch it this week now that we talk about Fantastic. it. Fantastic. <laughs> Let's talk about the sexier bits of the book. Um, did you have a specific sexert that you wanted to discuss and or share? No, just because like I kind of like expected more out of the okay. the sexier bits. Like again, but like I haven't read <laughs> just I guess I'm my current reading material. I'm like, oh, this is tame. You know, like <laughs> oh, Sierra compared to Sierra Simone, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't have, like, a specific moment, but, like, mm-hmm. I really liked how sweet and, like, gentle the, all of yeah. the, like, all of the, like, sexual moments were, like. I wrote down the word tender. Like, I feel like <laughs> there were so many. So much, like, tender. Yeah. Yeah. And that's not to say you can't it's have, silky, like, you know? raunchy sex together. But yet, honestly, you said silky, and I literally opened it to my highlight that I saved and I saw the word silky kisses yeah so uh-huh. I, you know it's not it's not coming out of nowhere like yeah <laughs> so yeah I also was amazed by um how many scenes they share in the shower like there's like a lot of a lot of shower sex a lot of shower sex, and just like shower touching shower yeah. cupping shower yeah. <laughs> I, like I'm just there was so much yeah. shower happening yeah. in this book <laughs> yeah lots of showers which I'm like I don't I don't know I mean they're very clean I'm cool with like taking like yeah, yeah that's great good for them <laughs> um I but like my girlfriend per like she is a like shower like she takes showers at like a boiling temperature like I could never <laughs> like take a shower with her that much like <laughs> Also, I've lived in Chicago, and I'm just wondering how big your shower is to yes be to accommodate accessible. two people. Like, this is this is a city apartment. Like, yes. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I have to doubt the space and size of your shower. Yeah. No, I mean they're both supposed to be very like tall, like they very small bird like people. So maybe it's just mm-hmm. not feasible for me as a fat woman. You know, no, me neither. <laughs> Me neither. I'm just like I. I feel like the the shower I have now is on the bigger side for what I've had. But I'm like it would not. Every time, let me tell you, as as much as I enjoy a good shower scene between uh-huh. a couple, bathtub scenes are the ones that set me off because I'm just like you're telling me that it two grown sense. people are fitting in this tub, submerged yeah. in the water, yeah. and it's not all over the ground like you yeah. Know, you would have the water. Bullshit. Absolutely. You bullshit. would have the water only up like two inches in order yeah. to like make this work. <laughs> like- no, I agree. And like, I think part of my like life dream is to have a tub big enough for like yes. me and a person or two to be submerged and yes. like it be like it be like cool and sexy or whatever. But it's just like <laughs> if we're living in like a city and we're poor, like no, that's nah. not going to be happening. <laughs> You're a comedian and an actor. I don't yeah. think so. A comedian is not a full time comedian. She has a day job, so like you know, like, we know she's not making money yet. Let me. I'll share a little a little excerpt that I saved. Um, this one was from. I think this is after they went. Yeah, this is after they went to the pride parade and they come back and you guessed it, take a shower together. Um, because they're like washing off glitter and you know, stickers and all the things you accumulate when you go to a pride parade. Uh So um, I'll give you a little bit of this. Here we go. Steam began to flow out of the bathroom and we eagerly stripped our clothes off and stepped into the shower together. Her body was slick against mine as we washed off the glitter and peeled off the stickers. I chuckled at the spot where the beads had bled into her sweaty neck, creating a rainbow tattoo of sorts and wiped it away for her. Underneath the water, she ran her hands up my side and pulled me close. I tasted her mouth, vodka and gum, and stroked my tongue over hers. That that seemed to create something urgent in her because she hastily reached over and turned off the shower, then dragged me, still dripping wet, to her bed. 
She laid me down, and then she was on top of me, her body soft and warm from the shower. Her breath tickled my wet skin as she placed silky kisses all the way down my body. I'll stop there. I mean, it, it goes on, but it goes on. Uh, it's uh, silky. We got silky, silky in there. Yeah, silky, um, a shower. Slick. I feel like we should play bingo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All the key words for sure. But yeah, yeah it's, it's she said sweet. a lot too in this book. Mm, yeah. Not for me. Not you for me. It. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> These are, by the way, between creamy and uh, slick, those were both potential titles for our summer special that's coming soon. So, they, love that, it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's it's definitely fitting. <laughs> Wait, I love that. <laughs> well, let's let's wrap up our discussion by giving this book a few grades because ever the teacher's child, I have to Wait, have I to put that. a grade on it, right? So. <laughs> On this podcast, our ratings are for heart, humor, and heat on a scale Mm. of 1 to 10, 10 being the very best that it could possibly be for you, of course. I know everybody's ratings will be different. Um, Let's start with the heart for this one. What do you think? Actually, like, I'll give it an 8. Like, I thought, like, yeah, I thought, like, the heart, the emotional aspect was in the right place. Just, like, Paige's love story like I thought that was good yeah how about you I agree I think to me this will be my highest rating for sure for the book and I would give it like an eight eight and a half like the only thing that takes away from it is that we they spend so much time apart in like the right the last third of the book so yeah it's like neverland of relationships yeah wasteland of relationships yeah 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 Yeah, that's exactly why I bumped it down to an eight Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but I love the relationships between the friends the family like all of that all of that was lovely. So um, I really did appreciate that. Um, okay, well, uh, how about humor? What do we think? Miss Rom-Com. Humor. We both write rom-coms. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to bump it up to like a six and a half, seven, just because okay. like I liked those little references that I didn't, or like I appreciate those references that I didn't get because like I'm not like a theater mm, person, okay. you know, like there's probably a lot of moments that were like really cute and funny that I just, that went <laughs> over my head. <laughs> you know what? They would have, even as a theater person, they probably would have gone over my head if I listened to an audiobook too, because I am 100% mm. a visual learner. Like if I didn't ah, see uh-huh. it, on the page, I might have missed it too. So it's okay, not yeah. just you. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? What would you grade it? You know, I do, I, I might go a little bit lower. I might go more of like a five, five and a half. Mm-hmm. And that's not to say I didn't have my tee kind of moments <laughs> because I did. And I think, again, if you're a theater person, you will get a kick out of just seeing the references that are in there. And yeah. especially with the songs and all that. Is it laugh out loud hilarious though? No. no. Like, and that's okay. Yeah. Also, like, I thought like Alex's kind of like stand up jokes were just kind of like flat. I feel that way about every stand up character ever written. Ever. Like, yeah. I, don't, I don't know if I've ever actually watched a show, read a book, seen a movie where there is a character who is a stand-up comedian and they actually make funny jokes like yeah. I feel Wait, like have you seen Marvelous Mrs. Maisel how do you feel okay about... no those are funny I do think yeah, a I lot know. of those I, are I funny, those were funny. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that <laughs> but he's like the only only like stand-up comedian ever in a show like that yeah. I thought was funny you know like don't okay, even get great. me started on Che in the uh, Sex in the City reboot. Sara Ramirez's oh my character. God. Worst <laughs> jokes I've ever heard. Like so <laughs> awful. <laughs> I I can do a whole podcast just about that. <laughs> I was at a drag show and like on last Monday, and there were, I'm not even joking. Three different people wearing Che Che no. like t-shirts. I mean, obviously, like ironically, but I was just like, I love this. I love that as a culture, we've just like decided that we love whatever to thing hate that Che. che. Is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I if if people haven't watched the Sex and the City reboot, honestly, great choice. Um, but if you have I respect it. <laughs> if you have You'll know exactly what we're talking about because this is one of the worst characters to ever grace 
the TV. And it's so sad because here I was excited, like, oh my God, we're getting a non-binary, you know, comedic character on TV. Sara Ramirez is a gorgeous specimen of a human. Oh, absolutely. I was so excited. And it is like a caricature of somebody who just makes jokes about being queer. And I'm like, Th- this could be so much better. Like, yeah, this like just, it could have been so much better. It could have been so much better. And so I will say I did appreciate um, Alex's jokes much more than Che's jokes in this, oh, yeah. in this book. But uh, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of glad that um, Avery Easton didn't focus too heavily on that because maybe it's one of those things too where it's like, you know that you can't do it justice. So it's like, why, why even, why even step try? into yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> that zone? Uh, so well done. Good choices. Yeah. <laughs> How about um, the, the sexiness? What do we think of the sexcapades? The oh, heat? Um, yeah, I'm going to give it like a two, two and a half. Like- <laughs> <laughs> well, now, to be fair, it's hard when what you've read so far yeah, is I know. I'm just like, Simone yeah. and Mafia. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, 100% recognize that, like, I, you know, I, my reading material is very heavily skewed. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> that is fine. I, here's the thing. I will say I have set a scale for myself that just for consistency sake, I stick mm, with. Mm-hmm. So... I did enjoy the love scenes. I did think they were tender and sweet and loving. (laughs) Silky. Not what I personally prefer in my romance. I'm Mm -hmm. more skewed towards Sierra Simone. But (laughs) but for my personal reference, a five is generally the lowest I will give a book if there is sex on the page. Like Mm -hmm. five is that we've gotten there. We've seen it. And we do have that. It's not very explicit. But we do have multiple scenes of sex on the page in this book. So because of that, I think I'll bump it up to a six. Okay, yeah. No, I mean, this is a great, like, from an academic perspective, totally (laughs) respect your scale. Um, From, like, a personal, I want them to fuck, okay? (laughs) We're on the same page. We are on the same page 100%. And... God, the only thing I was like, every time, I just, I wish there were toys. I wish... There had yeah. been toys like that. Right. When I literally, maybe you do this too, but when I get into my romance novels, the first thing I do is keyword searches and I search <laughs> for. Wait, um, I've never, oh, that's funny. I've never done that. You Wait, ask, you're, like, this can be the new like question. You're like really revolutionizing my like, <laughs> way of reading these books, actually. I'm, I'm glad so we're talking glad. About this. <laughs> this can be the new question that you ask all of your new book talk friends is what are yeah. your wink wink search terms because we all have them and if it was a male female romance I obviously start with cock like that's number one we we go straight to cock Um, yeah (laughs) this time around I searched pussy didn't have it so I was like zero yeah okay so very tame yeah hmm, okay I I searched vibrator I searched uh, strap on. I searched. Nope, none of the above. Yeah, none, none. You know, I mean, like, so we we get some fingers, so we get some <laughs> silky kisses. licking, yeah, silky kisses. <laughs> <laughs> so we get a lot of showers. Everyone is very hygienic. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> which, but yeah, yeah so. I always like think about like I don't know, like maybe it's not supposed to be so personal, but like I always think about like is this like what the author finds hot you know like is that could be yeah. I don't know enough about Avery Easton either and and you know Avery's relationship status or like real life experiences either to know like if this was maybe like reminiscent of like a personal coming out story mm-hmm. or if this was you know based on um some somebody that Avery knows I have no idea yeah. um so I don't I don't mind a um a romance with that's that's less explicit there I don't think there's anything wrong with that I feel like it worked for this book like it's not that I was like oh man I wish they were pulling out vibrators left and right like yeah part of me does but Uh I feel like it did work for the story yeah and the tone of the story that we were given so I'm I'm fine with that I did I give it a rating? I don't think I did. I think I said a six, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You said a six. <laughs> yeah. I no, you're right. Like I'm not mad at it. Like it it served 
the like sweet tender easy love that it was supposed to be yeah Yeah. (laughs) i love that they each they eat so much thai food and sushi i was like great choices this is fantastic (laughs) yeah also very realistic because that's also mostly just take out so yeah (laughs) exactly i was like i there's a lot i can get on board with with all of these people in this book i would love to hang out with them so yeah, I'm. I hope that there are more books in this in this series, just because I would love to see also more books in general set in the theater. I don't think there's enough, and I think when we see it, it's usually people who have already made it mm-hmm. that they're already famous. They're, you know, uh, movie movie stars, or yeah, and it's like that's great. I love to fantasize about stuff like that as yeah. well, but. I like seeing people who are putting in the work, who right? Have mm-hmm. paid their dues and are finally getting noticed, like yeah. because that's what we all want as artists, right? And it's just like you, like the struggle of being like an up and coming artist is like, I, yeah, yeah, that was refreshing because I, again, we don't see that a lot. And yeah. a woman and a queer woman. There's yeah. like there's layers to it. Like yeah. it's hard enough. To want to be an actor. But then if you're like, well, I want to be an actor and I'm also a woman and I'm also a queer woman. Like there, there's just so many extra layers to it that you get with all that nuance. Yeah. So I, I'm a fan. I'm a fan. And I and I liked the characters. I liked the style of writing. I, w- I would read more. I'm actually like, now I'm going to go read the like first one and let you know how I yes. feel about it. Because I'm like, I really need to know like what happened and like how is that. Is she the villain? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I hope she is because I like this like concept of a rede- redemption arc. Um, well, and girl, if you're reading Mafia, you're get, you'll probably get a lot more of it in Mafia than you will in Sweet Sapphic Romance. Absolutely, absolutely. I'm just like I keep thinking about how I guess they're all like I don't know. I like like to compartmentalize because that's like they're all kind of like serial killers if you really think about it. Like, they- yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> But we're gonna ignore that for the for the sake of my peace of mind. <laughs> well, I'm I'm excited that you got to, if nothing else, read something a little bit different than what you absolutely I did Thank already you. been reading in romance. Thank you so for my, expanding my horizons. <laughs> absolutely I'm happy to do it and thank you for hanging out with me absolutely thank you for having me I loved this you're so fun you're so fun I can't wait to see what um rom-com you eventually write for us and maybe it'll be a a sapphic mafia rom-com I don't know I'm just saying I would read it I would read it that's gonna be that's probably my next project I mean this one is more of like my homage to like being one of like the only brown people that I knew and like growing Mm. up in like the austin kind of indie music scene okay so. but I'll, I'll keep you updated on my mafia romance <laughs> yeah coming to a theater near you yeah <laughs> thanks so much for listening boobies and newbies is part of the frolic podcast network Find more podcasts you'll love at frolic.media slash podcasts. You can follow Boobies and Newbies on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Boobies Podcast.